Hello and thanks for joining us on Signature TV. This is Signature Sport, your flagship sports show on Signature TV that comes your ways every weekdays at 11 a.m. with me, Franklin Imana, your sport and core. And today on the show, it promises to be exciting as we will be taking you to the ever exciting world of sport. You know, sports don't go to sleep. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 31 days a month the world of sport is always on a fast pace we will be taking you to the latest in the Nigerian Premier Football League as one team recorded its first defeat of the season and the Inogo Green era continues with the likes of Caterpillars as they bounced back from two goals down uh, to pull up a draw against Lobby Stars we will be taking you also to the latest in the Nigerian uh, Super Falcons as we hear that the draws for the 20 2024 African Cup of Nations that will be going down in Morocco has been made known. Who will the Super Falcons be facing? Stay tuned to find out. And one man is wishing that this nightmare will come to an end. The coach of Manchester City, who just signed a two year contract extension, is not having it funny, as it is not a roller coaster ride for new Manchester United coach Ruben Almorim as he tests his first winless game of the season. And far away in the Serie A, Romelu Lukaku is making his name known and our man Ademola Lukman is making his name known in Italy. if for those that haven't known him with a goal and an assist against Parma and in the German Bundesliga Harry Kane the sweet Harry Kane is on the record books with a record of scoring the fastest goal in the history of the German Bundesliga in less than 50 games. All these and many more in the world of tennis, a Formula One, boxing as well as the latest from the, from the NBA uh, will be live on the show. I've got two amazing guests with me. Who are they? Stay tuned to find out a signature a sport makes a return after this short timeout. All right, welcome to Signature Sport, and it is game on. Before the game is finally on, permit me to introduce my guest to you. He's a sport analyst, a sport lover, and he's a fitness coach. When it comes to the world of sport, he's an authority. Mr. Ugu Collins joins me live on the show. A very good morning to you, Mr. Collins. Yes. It's a pleasure <laughs> having you join us. I couldn't, keep, I couldn't keep the smile in my head, but I decided that that would be the first way to actually approach the show. It's a privilege. It's a definite <laughs> privilege to be here, but we'll take it, we'll take it one step at a time. I Absolutely. How does it feel like a talking sport on television? <laughs> Is this the first time? Very, very much so. Very oh, much wow. so. I think um, I'm, I'm in the mood of, I'm actually having so many goosebumps. <laughs> I'm actually facing so many things at the same time, but I believe as the show goes on, I'll get... Absolutely. into the reading of things but <laughs> it's just a privilege I'm, I'm grateful to be here fantastic i can't wait to keep on going and that is how sport comes it comes with your new farewells as well as uh, the uh, beauty in the world of sport and talking about beauty let's move over now officially as we get the show underway as we move straight to the glass Ah, so we are, it is good news uh, emanating from the Nigerian Football Federation as uh, Al Aji Ibrahim Musa Gusso, the president of the Nigerian Football Federation, has now been appointed, or should I say, elected into the Wafu B. Uh, confrontanity. He is the first vice president of the West African Football Union, uh, Zombie, in uh, the election that took place last week Friday. 
in Naomi, the capital of uh, uh, Benin Republic, uh, during the years of CAF uh, African School Football Championship, which served as the qualifying round for the Wafu B tournament. He took the uh, uh, the uh, position of the first vice president with the likes of Kurt Edwin, uh, Edwin, I beg your pardon, Simon Okraku, becomes the president of the uh, uh, federation. He emanates from the G. FA and that is the Ghana Football Association is officially the president of the Wafu B uh, zone uh, angle of the of the African uh, sport. Recall that we have the CONCACAF, uh, the uh, SECAFA that belongs to the southern region of Africa, and of course we have the NIL in the northern African region. We also have the eastern. Uh, uh, parts of the African sport and for the West Africa it is known as Wafu B. Uh, Wafu B uh, comprises of seven countries in West Africa with Nigeria topping it as at the headquarters uh, go, uh, followed by Togo, Bene Republic, Ghana, Burkina Faso, Niger Republic and Cote d'Ivoire. Gusso, who becomes the president of the Nigerian Football Federation in September 2022, has held several high-level positions in African football. His roles include serving on the organization committee for the African Nations Championship and acting as a top security officer in both the CAF and FIFA. It is a win for African football, I must say. It is also a win for Nigerian football, having the president of the Nigerian Football Federation serving as the first vice president of the Wafu B zone. Uh, Collins, how good is this news when it comes to Nigerian football and Nigerian administration? Yeah, I, I feel it's like um, taking your opportunity when it comes. Absolutely. So you've been given the privilege. You've gone through the stages of how it should be. You understand that um, you've you've gotten this new opportunity to take the next step. Are you ready to take the next step? So your CV should qualify you for that position. Mm, and sure. I think we are taking it. We are now getting it where it's no longer the politics that are actually winning us the position. It's the qualification itself. So I feel this is this is a beauty. This is a beauty, especially in Africa, because everything normally actually circles around this politics. Absolutely. Where it is not deserved, it is earned. It's mm, not true. earned, it is just received. It is like a birthright. We need to stop with that mentality. We need to focus on the qualifications. We need to end this kind of situations. And for someone like him, he has actually done that. He is more than ready to take this step, I believe. So we can't wait to actually see him on this um, particular opportunity and then take us to the next levels that we expect to be in. Absolutely. Talking about taking us to the next level, <laughs> remember we had the likes of uh, the former NFF president, uh, uh, Amadou Pinic, who served mm. as uh, the vice president of the uh, in the CAF, that's a confederation of African football. And someone will say, what well, his position over there earned us. We didn't win the African Cup of Nations sure. during his reign, and neither did we come close. The closest we came was under the present administration, uh, Ibrahim so we have finished second yeah. Yeah. in the last uh, uh, African Cup of Nations. But for the women football and for the underage, we are absolutely fantastic. Very true. Uh, uh, that is the thing that I keep on saying about Nigerian football. We always seem to get the grassroots right. But what happens when we are on the international stages? What do we do to show that we are ready to take the next level? So I believe we are so with someone who would carry this vision we have where grassroots comes out fine the women football come out fine then the international stage is where we are meant to be you can call yourself the african the giant of africa and you are slacking behind uh, Collins, you, you don't want to go there <laughs> you don't want to start this debate talking about international competition you don't want to go there okay. because we haven't really fared badly in the international stage we haven't in the course of uh, course of the show we will look at how we have uh, done well in the africa in the world scene especially with our underage of football True. and the women football 
football. Super All right, so let's move over now to uh, the biggest event that is currently ongoing in the uh, capital, federal capital territory, I must add, and that is the African Military Games uh, 2024. Uh, the city of Abuja have come alive uh, in the last five days. Uh, we at Team Nigeria in the military uh, uh, arena have been doing the country proud. Over the weekend, it was a sweet victory against the Equatorial Guinea uh, in the third place match of the football competition, uh, having been uh, defeated in the uh, uh, semi finals by Cameroon. It was a 4 0 thumping uh, by the Nigerian team over the Equatorial Guineans. And in the medal table, the uh, Nigerian military team is currently topping which has many medals as a 64 medals in the last five days with more of the medals coming from handball volleyball and nine gold medals from a taekwondo mm -hmm. a man who has been covering the game over the weekend as well as last week mr comrade uh, or rather comrade audio uh musa joins us on the show live on zoom uh, good morning uh, mr uh, uh musa audio all right i would definitely try to establish connection uh, with him as uh, he uh, joins us on the show giving us in swingers uh, concerning the amga 2024 all right we'll definitely get back to him but uh, uh while we await uh, his uh, presence on the show we move over now to the uh, the world of football we are the super falcons over the weekend uh, we uh, saw the draws that was uh, conducted and of course at the super falcons we will be knowing their opponent they are the most successful side when it comes to african women tournament nine times a champions they will be facing algeria and they will be facing uh, tunisia if i'm not mistaken and they will be facing uh, botswana in group B. What are the chances of the Super Falcons coming out from this group? 100% chance. We we don't play with the opportunity when we are actually being well, given. You are so confident. It's, that is what we have grown up to be. This is why I said in the international stages, giant of Africa, we have kept that with the women. So we have kept that with the grassroots. Why not go for that? But then the topic now is actually the women. So it's 100%. They know the levels that they have set. They know the levels that is expected from them. Um, having people like Chiamaka, Nadozie, Osinachi Owale, these are players that are very, very good. Uh, you see them perform daily. You see them do it daily. That, this is not a group that scares me, to be honest. It's not like we're playing South Africa who are our dear, dear rivals. So I believe we should come out on top of this. I believe nine-time champions should spe speak of a volume of fear to the oppositions we play. But then football is being played with the legs and the hearts once the ball once the game starts playing um you know for sure that your opposition is not going to give you that respect anymore if the respect starts before the game but once the game starts all level all levels are the equal so that is what we'll be expecting from our people to top this group absolutely we will be coming back to the chances of the super falcons coming out from this group and doing well recall that they were knocked out in the third place match <laughs> where uh, they surprisingly didn't uh, go beyond the semi-finals and uh, for the chance of winning the bronze medal uh, that is the losers finals they were defeated all right let's come back to our man our comrade musa audio he joins us live on the show good morning uh, uh mr audio uh, good to have you join us on the show a very good week a uh, good morning to you once again All right, the signal is uh, not uh, really strong from his uh, angle, but we will definitely uh, keep in touch with him as the show uh, progresses. Now, let's come back to the Super Falcons. The South Africans are in the uh, Group C, and we have Ghana also in that group. Ghana, for a very long time, and they haven't really uh, lived up to expectation when it comes to the chances of the, uh, the Black Queens of Ghana. But it's looking like uh, these... Uh, uh, years uh, rather next year's uh, WAFCON that is the Women African Cup of Nations it promises to be exciting now let's look at the, uh, the group uh, uh, ceaselessly we, see, uh, we have the likes of Morocco Zambia Senegal and Congo in group A and of course Nigeria Tunisia Algeria Botswana in group B but then in group C South Africa Ghana Mali 
and Tanzania. Mm. In one minute, you look at the various group. Who are you picking to qualify from these groups? Well, definitely Mali has a shout. Uh, this is a nation that has been developing their game yearly. Uh, South they will Africa. be up against South Africa and Ghana. Very true. And Tanzania. Very, very true. I, I, I feel South Africa is also 100%. The same way I see Nigeria, I always seek South Africa at that level because this is our dear rivals. These are the same people who have challenged us, taking us to many finals. The ones we have won, the ones they have won. So it is, it is like a no-brainer for South Africa. But like you said, you spoke about Ghana. You're seeing how they have struggled. They have a reputation to keep. So this is where I feel, for Ghana especially, the pressure is most on them. They are the ones that have to prove that they are worthy to be in this level. They can take that next step. But that, that is the big question. Can they actually do it? Can they actually take themselves towards that step where they can feel that this can be our year? But then again, football is being played with the legs and the head. Once the ball kicks, everything goes. That, that's just how I see the game. But before that, all we do can do here is analyze based on the reports we have, Absolutely. the results. So I feel, I feel the pressure is most on Ghana. South Africa also do have that pressure, but they can keep with it. They have the experience, they have the legs, they have they have everything, they have the resources. So this is a country I believe should even go all the way to the finals. Absolutely. Well. They are the defending champions of South Africa sure. and they have a very strong league yes. that produces the best of talent. And they have the one of the most, uh, if not the youngest squad in Africa, just behind mm. Nigeria. Mm. Well, let's look at group A, the uh, mm. host, Morocco is there. We have Zambia, we have Senegal, and the Diaro Congo. Zambia are one of the two nations that represented Africa in the just concluded Olympics Games, uh, where they were, of course, whitewashed in their group, <laughs> same as Nigeria. But then Zambia, of lately, the uh, she polo polo, they have been doing fantastic when it comes to women's football. I see them as one of the strongest house when it comes to a powerhouse in african uh, women's sports but they will be up against host nation morocco yes. and then as uh, senegal is there and Diari congo do you see zambia qualifying from this group or topping the table definitely i feel they are a dark horse you expect them to break some necks uh, th that's how i said who are the top of the table here would be morocco the host can zambia make a shout out there by actually beating morocco time will tell but again another country i do respect not just in zambia is senegal maybe the results haven't been there for them but definitely the way it's going senegal has a shout out there also as well but zambia always will be on them they have been a dark horse really also i think they are beginning to show they have that reputation to go to the next level but then again we expect something new I, I want to see something new from Wafcon this year. All right, let's go on this short break. When we return, we will be taking you to the latest coming out from the Nigerian Premier Football League, one of the league I love and follow the most in Africa. Although they are currently ranked number 12 in Africa, but trust me, in a couple of months, we will be among the top seven, if not the top five. Signature Sports makes a return after this timeout. All right, welcome back to Signature TV. Franklin Imona, your sport anchor is still here on the show, uh, Signature Sport. And I've got uh, my in-house uh, analyst, uh, Collins Ogo, and together we have been giving you the best of uh, sport analysis and sport stories. In case you are just joining us, uh, you have missed uh, a whole lot, especially from the first half of the show. But not to worry, you can go to our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook Facebook handle to get uh, claims of all that we have discussed in the first half of the show and also do well to like, share, comment and most importantly subscribe to our YouTube channel to enjoy more of our sporting stories. And straight away we move to the foreign scene. Where else should we start from if not the most followed, the most loved? and the most controversial uh, league in the whole of Europe. And where should we start from if not where our fans are jubilating, they are celebrating the downfall of Manchester City. It is 
five defeats on a bounce for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City side in all competition. Remember, they were knocked out in the EFL Cup by Tottenham Hotspur and they lost by four goals to one to a Sporting CP in the Champions League. And just over the weekend, they recorded their first defeat in, 13, in uh, 53 games across two years. What is happening to Manchester City? Can we say it is the law of diminution return or the law of injury? Okay, so um, I would first go back to the point where you mentioned controversy. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping you actually put it down Of here. course, I controversy, <laughs> So we are definitely going to get there. But when I look at Man City, I look at it as um, you have been champions for seven years. Um, sorry, six out of seven years, if I presume. And um, this is a team that in the end they have to actually rebuild you can't keep using the same players and expect the same returns because football is a game that has to do with the legs and the head i keep repeating it over again because i want to make it known that you play this game continually you can't expect we are humans actually we are going to break down one way or the other so very true man city at the point where they need to rebuild they need to bring in fresh legs they need to get uh, rid of the most experienced ones because they have lost their legs talking about, about players like kai walker talking about uh, ikai gondogan who they even brought back these are players that they need to actually refresh the squad with we need to bring the younger bloods people who haven't experienced success before but are hungry for it i think this is what man city is lacking but as a rival fan, I'm here for their downfall. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be said. But I, I, in the meantime, if we're looking at it based on just the truth, they need to rebuild. It's the law of diminishing return, just like you said, because you have been successful for a long period of time. But Absolutely. definitely, there are going to be drawbacks. There are setbacks that are going to happen. So they just need to see how well they can finish this season refresh the squad they really need to refresh the squad that's the biggest problem they have that is what they need to do this season all right let's go to the teams in london big wins for chelsea two one winners against leicester city goes by nicholas jackson and enzo fernandez and of course for uh arsenal their london rivals it was a sweet a three nil win against the northern forest where bukayo saka is uh continually making names for himself a goal and an assist for mikhail arteta's Side. Uh, what can we say about those two games at Chelsea and Arsenal? Is it just a, a good day in the office or the, you feel that their opponents are not just good enough? Leicester City, we hear that they have now sacked their coach, Steve Cooper, following that defeat. And for Nottingham Forest, Ola Aina and Taiwo Awoni could not help their team and muster at least a point against Arsenal. Yeah, so I will start with Chelsea because uh, this is a team that has begun a new rebuild of just the same way we have been talking of Man City. Manchester City. And the last two years have seen them be mediocre. So um, the fact that they are beginning to build on something new, this is the team with the youngest squad in the Premier League, as if I may say. So um, as the returns are beginning to show, those players are beginning to mature up. They are beginning to get to the level where they feel they can compete. But I still feel it's too early for a team like Chelsea. But in the sense of Arsenal, who I expected to be competing this season, they have had their setbacks. Arsenal uh, will always be Arsenal. Uh, oh. Near success syndrome. <laughs> they will always be. I'm happy. I'm not the one to say. I'm trying to be. Look, the statistics are there. It's very Two true. seasons we thought Arsenal will win the EPL. Yes. But just when it matters most, they tend to falter. And now that their biggest rivals is not doing well, that is Manchester City, look yes. at us now. They have just recorded their first win in about a three games. They couldn't get the most needed uh, wins, unlike Liverpool, to which we are coming next. They are runaway uh, leaders. And look at Arsenal. Arsenal, they are just uh, the more you look, the less you see kind of team in court. Uh, I don't think Arsenal fans will be happy listening to you when you say all this about their team. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very true, very, very true. The thing about Arsenal is they are a nearly team. And I feel the way they handled their transfer business this season was not good enough. They needed a top nine. Kai Havertz is not a player that I would say gives you... He's not a prolific goal scorer. Absolutely. So they definitely needed a nine. They needed a no and a Victor Gokuris. I don't know why they didn't go out to get that player. Bringing in experienced wingers like Sterling haven't proved to be... Um, Sterling? Exactly. The and grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the funny part. This is who they brought in to take them to the next level. Really? Is that who you feel would give you the Premier League? This is a player who is always struggling to have playing time at Chelsea. The same Chelsea who are actually going through the same rebuild. So Arsenal have, in their own sense, dealt themselves the blue 
of not being able to take themselves to the next level. And then you look at Liverpool, who, like you said, will go into the next topic. Let's not get to Liverpool proper. Uh, Liverpool, it seems as a slot, as seamlessly slot into the <laughs> Liverpool's a team. And you look at Mo Salah, he's, uh, uh, the he, he was the hero over the weekend with that smashing penalty he was able to convert. And that uh, the mentality uh, of Liverpool is the mentality of champions. Five points lead against uh, the likes of Manchester City, who are currently second. And um, it seems that Liverpool are not taking their foot off the pedal. Just one defeat so far in the EPL. Uh, what did Aslot tell these players? This is the most underrated team in the Premier League. And as a rival fan saying this about them, it shows how much Liverpool is being looked down on. This is a team that are always competing. They always are in the, the talk of the show. They are always being said, are they going to challenge? So it was looking like people were underestimating them this season. It was all about Arsenal, Man City. No one really looked at Liverpool. This is a team that has built and built and are here to stay. Is the simple truth of the matter when you have the slot machine coming in and slotting in just like you said mm. keeping them firing on all cylinders both in the defense the attack the midfield surprisingly players like gravenberg showing that they can actually play out of positions this is why i keep on seeing liverpool as the most underrated team in the premier league absolutely i am so happy that they are actually at this level where they can win it but they now need to do it they need to go all the way they are actually competing on all competitions i believe this season they are in the caraba cup the fa cup is yet to begin the champions league they are undefeated also the premier league only one loss so this is a team that definitely the results are showing what they are made of a team that is underrated but definitely is going to bring the eyes back to them that they can go all the way this is liverpool football club so let's see how far they can go actually this season and for some reason liverpool have been able to keep themselves off the social media of the press yes. they have been able to handle their internal issues internally and they have been able to do business brilliantly in the transfer market for me this is the or this rather are the all mark of a team that wants to go all out to win a title and now we come to one team that i believe might just be collins team he hasn't told me which team he support but so far i keep saying my rivals my rivals my rivals now let's talk about manchester united <laughs> manchester united over the weekend uh, despite uh, marcus rashford goal in the 81 seconds uh, beginning the reign of a new coach robin almorim was not enough to muster all three points uh, away from home uh, as uh, hutchinson uh, got a stunner uh, shortly before the uh, break uh, with a 22 yard screamer uh, it was helped uh, on the way uh, by uh, morocco's uh, right back mazari um, uh, andre onana uh, can be uh, applauded for stopping a uh, three goal mouth goals as it's too tall in between the sticks for manchester united despite the introduction of uh, rasmus hoyland uh, uh, joshua zegzi not forgetting uh, angate and of course uh, one man who made a return after over 13 months out look sure all these players i couldn't get the job done for uh, coach ruben almorim as the game ended 1-1 bringing manchester united from 12th position to 13th position it is no very uh, run for the likes of ruben almorim he came he saw but couldn't conquer this is a new coach that has the world at his feet when he was at the portuguese league absolutely and now he has come to the the king of kings in the premier league and um i remember you asking me a question before says where you said do i believe that um <laughs> manchester united are the engines of the premier league no i didn't say so don't put on the spotlight <laughs> almorium says that uh, manchester united are the engine of the epl yeah and in his words in his words Not he mine. says okay well um <laughs> wow Manchester United, wow. 13 time champions um, growing up looking at Manchester United like they could never fall off the pace of the pedal. And then now you're seeing them be mediocre. Now you're seeing them relying on history to actually make a name for themselves. They have brought in six. This is their sixth manager, I think, since. Uh, since uh, full time manager. Exactly, since uh, um, Sir Alex, Alex Ferguson retired. And uh, the great, I think the greatest. Um, the greatest achievement they have made so far has been a uh, Europa League and second place by Jose Mourinho. I remember Jose Mourinho saying that his greatest accomplishment as a coach was coming second in Manchester United and winning the Europa. Wow! 
from a coach that has won the treble to say that. But Manchester United is a club that keeps on giving, don't you think? Absolutely, and they we do. Are, we are definitely at the festive period. Oh, we? <laughs> we are. So. Now we know. <laughs> Let's so. look at the game of yesterday. The 3-4-3 three, three formation by Coach Ruben Almorim. For the very first time, the team is playing under a different formation and a different system and a different structure with a different coach. Do you see that as a, 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 as a stumbling block for Man United not defeating Ipswich yesterday? Even though the coach came out to say that the players were afraid, in fact, they were overthinking the 3-4-3 three, three formation and, and that uh, didn't help the team put the passes together and they were also losing chances. Well, that, the, that is his own point of view. But I remember a one great legend named Carlos Puyo once said, his dad once told him that, I would not be angry with you if you do not make the team because the other players were better than you. I will be angry at you if you don't make the team because they competed much more than you, because they fought much more than you. So before we talk about formations, you need to ask yourself, did Manchester, in the Manchester United players, did they compete as a team? Did they actually come out to play? Did they compete? Did they actually come out there to fight for every single ball? Do they win their duels? Did they win the second balls when they were in the, uh, the air? Um, so these are the questions you need to ask before we talk about formations. Then if you're competing, then we look at the formation. Manchester United do not have the personnel to play 3-4-3. Absolutely. This is the thing I have been saying. When you have Maserati playing as your right centre-back, you have um, Amadiallo, who is a winger, playing as a wing-back. It shows how much they lack um, the, the personnel to actually play in the system. Then you have the likes of Casemiro and Eriksen, who are, they are blessed in the sense that they have achieved but the uh, experience is there the but the legs the legs are, are not tiring there. And, and I, that was how we saw the midfield it was seamless for the likes of Hutchinson the likes of the lab to have a free stroll into the uh, midfield of Man United exactly the points because uh, the thing is Premier League is very physical this is a league that needs you to play not just with your brain your legs you need to be strong you need to fight for every single ball I think this is a league that has grown physical year in year out and um, Manchester United have not competed in the midfield era for a very long time. They keep on losing their battles. They keep on lo losing the duels. You have a young player, Emmanuel Lugate. I expected Amorim because this was your player at back at sports and you sold him to Manchester United. You are missing him here. I expected him to start with... Ah, come on. These are early days. There is just one match in as many matches that our coach Ruben Almorim would definitely have this uh, formation being as uh, seamlessly uh, interpreted by the players. Up next to Man United is a, a game in the Europa League where we'll see more of the 3-4-3 formation. The likes of Lenny Yoro is back. Not forgetting Malaysia, they are all there to see uh, how they can help the team, not forgetting Kobe Mino. Uh, due to time, we will definitely move to other stories where Real Madrid uh, actually uh, picked it up from where they left it from a 4-0 mm. win against Osasuna to a 3-0 win to Leganes over the weekend. Kylian Mbappe. Mm. Uh, Federico uh, uh, Ververdi was also on the scoreline and Jude Bellingham putting the high seat on the kick and then reducing the uh, points uh, to a uh, four points behind uh, Barcelona who could only manage a uh, two-two draw against the Celta de Vigo over the weekend. Yeah, um, Kylian Mbappe has been the talk of the show, hasn't he? Uh, for bringing the marquee signing for the season in all of world football absolutely has he lived up to the name i would ask you that question for me the answer is a no and this is because he's playing out of position he's learning a new position that he didn't grow accustomed to playing as a striker for the greatest club uh, in the history of football but i think he is getting there with the in help your own terms the greatest own. club in your own words they are they are Leeds United fans will come out and say our club is the greatest Aimba will come out and say there's no club like ours <laughs> they, they all know that's on the flip they, side that's though. on the flip side but they all know who the daddy is in the game so <laughs> Madrid are actually they, they you all everyone wants to play for Real Madrid this is the the biggest club in world football you can't even compete they, they know the expectation they they have on themselves so for a player like Kylian Mbappe he knows what is expected of this is not PSG where he is the the godfather the mm. uh, the, the final say he is just one of those players right Absolutely. now so he needs to prove that he can be the best player in the world in this club as Vinicius has been proven but that is the question 
and it will remain the question can vinicius and mbappe continue to exist in the same team they will they, they have will. they have if been. ronaldo and bill can exist ronaldo and kaka can do well i i believe me i believe you me the likes of akila and mbappe and vinicius will only do well do not pay attention mm. to negative journalism and that yeah. is why we want to dwell now on Ari Kane with Bamanich I scoring mm. is a, a, a 50th goal for the club in 43 matches breaking the record set by Erlen Allen where he got 50 in 50 matches big win for Bamanich and for Bayern Leverkusen it was a 5-2 win over Hedingham yes. and uh, Dortmund defeated Freiburg by four goals to nail no upsets over the weekend in the German Bundesliga in my rating very true I think they all kept to their names and in this week um, week's um, fixtures but going back to Harry Kane this is a player that needs something for his legacy this is a player that has not won any competition oh, so there far we go again. so no we have to talk about this because this is this is supposedly supposed this is supposedly supposedly meant to be the best stri striker in the whole of England but has won nothing to prove it you have him if he had stayed back in England, would he have trophies back back in his name? He wouldn't actually have anything. To if he had moved to Man United, no, but he, I don't, he didn't. He did not. Though he stands a chance uh, in uh, winning a tr a tr at least a trophy this season with Bayern each uh, running as uh, the uh, league leaders so far, and they are not looking like uh, they are going to take their foot off the pedal anytime soon. I'm praying for him. I'm actually praying oh, for. Why it has gone to prayers? Uh, it has gone to prayers <laughs> <laughs> because you can't you can't be a player coming into a new league and buy a Leverkusen and win the league for the first time. In the and that is what the football <laughs> gives you. You do not know where the cookies are will crumble. And finally, let's move over now to the Italian Serie A. We have Romelu Lukaku's striker was a deciding goal, uh, heading at the likes of Napoli uh, to uh, uh, a winner over new coach uh, Claudio Ranieri's Roma. Uh, yes, and they were unable to win uh, at home. And we saw uh, Demola Lukman again uh, with a goal and, uh, and an assist against uh, Parma, where they won by three goals goes to one well for AC Milan and Juventus it was a no victor no vanquish game and goalless it's ended yeah um AC Milan have a lot to prove this season you can recruit the likes of Rafael Leal um Chukweze um, Morata Tammy Abraham and be going goalless this is this is an attack and Christian Pulisic if I may add this is an attack that should be scoring goals but I would have to give credit back to Juventus they have retained that defensive structure that they once lacked last season um going back to someone like Romelu Lukaku uh, this is a player that um controversies seem to follow him but for the right reasons this season the positive reasons he has stood up for the Enazuris this season the they are beginning to show that they can compete with Antonio Conte one thing with Antonio Conte is give him a team that are not playing the Champions League he would win you the league oh, wow. it is just something that keeps on following him <laughs> everywhere he goes so they are proving it again this season can um Napoli go all the way this season I hope so because I'm a big fan ever since obviously Victor Osimhen is there and who would actually go without talking about Ademola Lukman oh wow African that best man. player African best player of all time. according to you yes we have to wait till December we for him to be crowned anything apart from Lukman <laughs> winning this we riot Nigeria needs to riot for real we need ah I don't who do you? Just hope that a certain Vinicius <laughs> Junior is not pulled out on him <laughs> in this one. I want to see Africa pull that one. I, I definitely want to see what Africa Absolutely, can Absolutely, the stats are there, the games are there. And also, coaches are saying that current form, no African in the in this India finest of our, our performance uh, can be compared to a certain Ademola Lukman. He always said, and he has been doing it Very time good. is not on our side uh, though we wish uh, to talk more and more on the show we will be wrapping up uh, in the world of tennis as world number one uh, Yannick Sina has uh, definitely uh, won the Davis Cup for his uh, nation defeating uh, the Netherlands in uh, the final for the very first time the Italians are uh, winning uh, these uh, one uh, talking about the Davis Cup once again let me say thank you to you Mr. Colin Zugu for joining me on the show it was fun having you talk sport with me same here Mr. Fr Franklin, I, I can't wait to do this once again with you. Oh, talking about once again, tomorrow is Champions League. Mm, mm. Mm. What was the combination of Champions mm. League? <laughs> All right, <laughs> that is the size of the package on the show. Do want to join us at the same time at same station tomorrow at 11 a.m. On behalf of Collins and I, we want to say we are done and we are gone. God bless. No stress. Adios.